Good morning. It is time to open up the card shop and bring you the content. You come for business, I give you content. That's the kind of trade we're in here for. But today's trade deal, today you are giving me, you know, you're sitting down and giving me your attention. I am giving you the Shadow Legion, probably one of the best legions of all time, deck and fight. So we're going to take a look at it. New patch just dropped as well. So the like exorbitant amount of beep like rank points has been reduced. So sadly, I didn't quite profit off of it, but that's okay. We play games to enjoy them, not to burn out of them. And that's just how things are. That's just how things are. So let's take a look at the new Shadow Paladin deck and how it's going to be built. Now, before we even like get into it, this deck in particular, especially the great twos, can really be like changed to your like whatever you prefer, right? People play Nemain, people play Tartu, people play Maka, sorry, not Maka, Mah Mana, Mana, yeah. Then people play like the great two from the other Legion. There's so many ways to build the great twos of this deck, so really feel free to experiment with whatever you like. I am more of an aggressive player, I like to have like more board presence, more ability to push in the early turns, and so I still play things like Tartu. So here, like this Tartu slot and this slot, for example, I think this card is actually really, really good. Um, but, you know, you can change it out. Like you can change this out for the mains, for manas. Feel free to experiment. Honestly, don't stop yourself from experimenting. Also, the cool thing is because it's the morning, I can do this and I just become entirely lit up. So <laughs> the way that the sun is bouncing off the sleeves on my table will literally just blind me, which is pretty cool. But let's break down the deck, right? Still, we run the Judge Bow, which when it boosts a Phantom, of course, Phantom Blaster Abyss is a Phantom. You can count on one, put it into the soul to then search your deck for two grade ones or less and call them. And of course, we usually want to call these Sword Breakers that when placed from deck, let a Soul Boss one to draw one. Still a great card to draw into PGs. We run some Mordred Searchers, you know, when placed, discard a grade three to search for Mordred Phantom added to your hand because Break Ride is really important in this deck, actually. Like, this is the one deck that is happy, really happy to sit on Break Ride until you can get it. Uh, of course, Doran is still amazing card and my one of is just the dark bond i think dark bond is still fine sometimes just to kind of get the retire amounts you know the amount of revengers on the board to retire then of course bdr battle dome revenger is still great uh, of course but we have a new blaster dark which is blast dark revenger abyss so he says when place breaker circle if your vanguard is a revenger count must one to retire an opponent's grade one specifically grade one rear guard now this card is still really good because as I said in the previous deck and fight, everyone is playing Royals, Golds, and Shadows. Somebody asked me on the on the Bluish Flame one, saying like, oh, why don't you play Monarch Sanctuary Alfred? Is there no Link Joker? There is no Link Joker. Like, it's really rare to see it. And I think next month it's going to go up a lot, which I'm heavy about. I really love playing Link Joker in Zero, so I'm personally quite pleased. But um, this card is really good because this kills Dorans. This kills the, like, Gold Paladin Doran. This kills the, like, the, the Royal Paladin Grade 1 that, like, bought deck stuff to draw. It's, it has some really pesky targets in the meta so it's a really good card overall so i played it to three copies then we play three copies of the mac art when you legion you search your deck for a grade one or less revenger and call it as rest for no cost no counter boss no soul blast nothing that's actually really really nice i do like this card a lot personally and then finally i do play tartus because i do like her for the early game you know i like just turn two if i need the mordred i search out the mordred searcher if i need doran already i search out doran set up for next turn i like you know, on place, if your fangers a revenger, count almost one, search your deck for a grade one or less revenger, and call it in the same column as his unit. I like her a lot, personally. So, as I said before, we're still running Mordred, Break Ride, give 10k to your vanguard, and search your deck for a grade two or less, and then give it 5k. Then, of course, my, like, your one of grade three can kind of be anything. I play Mordred Phantom. I never go into this. I know a lot of people play different things. I don't think you play Raging Form in this deck, though. I don't think you play Raging Form in this. I prefer to run the Cormac as a heal because Cormac gives you more ability to, like, not, like, you've seen how long Legion games go. You've seen how long Legion games go through, like, my streams, through my videos. Speaking of which, twitch.tv slash different fight, make sure you follow. But, you know, you've seen how long Legion games can go and how close you can get to deck out and like how people can lose the deck out in the Legion format. And I think running extra extra legions on top of the uh raging, not the raging, the Revenger Phantom Blaster Abyss is really important. He has a nice skill too, and he attacks the Vanguard if you Legion State, Count Must One retire a rear guard to get to get plus one crit for that turn for that battle. Sorry. The nice thing is that this can retire anything, not just Revengers, so you can also pop your sword breakers with this, which is quite cool. And he gets plus three K if you have another unit in the middle column. And 
And finally, the main legion, of course, is the Revenger Phantom Blaster Abyss. So you legions with uh, Blaster Dark Revenger Abyss. And once per turn, during the turn that you legioned, so you do have to rewrite for this skill for to use it next turn, uh, at the end of the battle that he attacked the opponent's vanguard, can almost one retire three of your Revenger rearguards to stand him and draw two. Now, this is cool because the power on him stays because he stands. He doesn't rewrite from hand like Raging Form. So if you give him, like, Break Right Power, if you give him, like, Trigger Power, it stays, and you can get over defensives really easily with this. So it's just a really strong restanding, restanding card. It's just good old Shadows, right? This is good old Shadows, lots of filtering, lots of retire, and lots of restands, as we do, as we do. So that's it. That's basically how the deck looks, and I think that it's really, really strong. I think so. Let's just get into some games. You know, we, we did pretty good with Bluish Flames. Let's see if we can keep that up with Revengers. I think it's quite strong. Like, if we run into Mirror Matches or Golds, I think it's a pretty even footing. I think that this deck and Bluish and Seekers aren't too far apart. I think they're actually pretty close in the meta, uh, and I do think that they are the three best decks. Silverthorns is the one deck I haven't really explored yet post-nerf, and I would like to hear your guys' opinions. Like, if you've been playing Silverthorns in ladder, how has it been? Because I've been hearing that from a lot of people that it hasn't really gotten what, like too much weaker, even with the nerf, but it's been put to like a good point. So I'd love to hear that because I need to know those kind of things before I make a tier list and stuff like that. This hand is okay, but no PGs is kind of yikes. So let's just do this. Let's just do this. All right, no PGs, but Tartu is nice. So at least we'll take that. All right, we'll draw into them. We'll use Swordbreaker and draw into them. We're good. So they're playing against Genesis, so this probably be Yggdrasil, so we should be careful with extra grade threes in hand and stuff. You know, not to get randomly comboed and just murdered outright. Definitely want to avoid that. That would probably be a good idea. So here we can have a nice little aggressive start with the Tartus. That's why I like Tartu a lot, is that she just lets you push early damage much better. Um, and just like search out Dorans and stuff, like set up your board easily. If this is control Genesis, those Dorans are going to die pretty quickly. And we don't have Garmore to protect them either here, you know, unlike Bluish Flames. So that's something to worry about. All right, goodbye, my SP Legion mates. Goodbye, friend. All right, we just go into Blaster Dark Avenger. So nothing otherwise to ride, I think. Tartu would be fine, but I mean, we want to use her on rear, not on Vanguard. So just search out a Doran and set up the column for next turn for the BDR. So that's pretty good. And then we have Judge Bow here as well to do things with. All right, draw into another mortar. That's good. We want to keep that separate, that spare grade three needs to stay in hand, basically. So yeah, the reason why this deck is quite quite happy to sit on you know sit on the mortar for a while and wait for the break right is because you generate a lot of resources, so you always have like cards in hand to call down to actually like you know live until they give you the four damage, and also. It's just that you have cards like Tartu and Blaster Dark and just a lot of tools in general that allow you to push for, you know, kind of wait for quite a bit. Is this not a Regalia deck? This seems like it does run the Legion starter, so I think he does have Regalia Legions, but he also runs the Yatakara, so which is quite interesting. All right, so he's only going to give me one CB, so I have to see here what we do, because we have only one CB, we want to use Judge Bao. We don't really need to use Blaster Dark. Okay, Drag Ruler is interesting, let's just say. Let's ride Mordred here. Alright, so, as usual, Mr. Mordred. I gotta put up the voices for the rides a little bit. Alright. Um, I kind of want damage now. Don't really want to call... We, we could call down this, but then I don't have... We could call down Tartu and then BDR. Just set up another Doran column so I don't lose everything to... Retire. How big is our drop zone now? Not too big, but he could soul blast three, so I think mm, I'll take this a little bit slower. I'll take this a little bit slower in this case. We're not gonna push too much. We're gonna just do this. Just push one more damage. Not gonna call down an intercept and just kinda see where things go. We get a heal, which is pretty huge, so we can actually put that back to deck, which is nice. And then of course here. Uh, we'll be able to use the one last Cannon Blast here to use the Judge Bow. Is that a second PG that went to damn? So Yeah, it was. Okay. Damn, fair. Fair. Alright, double Swordbreaker. It's always very good. You know, Soul Blasting 1 to just get an extra draw is just very good. This card was, you know, this little, like, combo, quote-unquote, was used for a very long time in the TCG, so it's unsurprising that it's really good in 0-2. I mean, look at how many resources you make just from this, right? It's crazy. Alright, so now it depends on her ride. Oh, Break Ride as well, Metis. So it looks like we're going to be playing the lame game for a little bit. Just kind of both sitting on sitting on less than 4 damage and kind of stalling it out. I mean, you know, 
fair it's it's good for me because I don't even have I don't even have the Legion in hand, so it's it's fine for me actually to just kinda of wait here. We can use Tartu next turn to overcall one of these columns. There's been Nerva, but I still haven't seen a Legion card. Even though he runs the Legion. That's still not a Legion card. He runs the Legion starter though. Is that just bait? <laughs> Is it not actually Legion? I feel like it should be. Alright. Mac art is cool. I think I just want to push damage here. We use Tartu to overcall the Swordbreaker here. That's kind of what you often do. Just overcall the Swordbreakers. Use the last Doran. Boop. Very nice. I think I'm going to just overcall this and just pop. So we can kind of push a little bit of damage. I'm not sure if it's worth it though, actually, when I think about it here. Because I'm relying on a on a, on triggers, basically, to push damage. Taking out booster here isn't really worth it either, but I think it might be better. I think I'll take out the booster here instead. I don't think it's actually worth to push otherwise. So, because I think otherwise I'm just gonna... I'm looking at, like, dying to, to a defensive, and even without a defensive, if I don't check a trigger, then my attacks don't fully go through either. Okay, we draw into the legions. So that's really good for next turn. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, so this way we hit over defensive. No defensive, but still good, good preparation. We'll give her break grind and see what she does. I... Do have the hand to survive. Let's see if Yatagarasa comes. Uh, not the Yatagarasa. If uh, CEO Yggdrasil comes out here. I think that would be the most yikes. No, it's Yatagarasa actually. Does run this grade 2 as well. Alright, well I guess they don't have the Legion cards. But 7 cards in deck. 14 soul. 14 soul. Wow. Alright, alright, alright. I mean, this seems like a fine board for me to kind of get over. Uh, this game's two crit, right? Yeah, two crit, so it actually swings for three damage. So we can actually attack with this, use the skill, and then pass. But he goes, goes really close to deck out, I think, because he has to stand two, get two crit. Oh, he doesn't draw from it. No, no, he does draw two. does draw two, yeah, there it is. You gonna use it? I feel like probably should, right? Probably should. Alright, let's see here. Alright, limit breaking. So it's gonna go down to very few cards in hand. Gonna go down to very few cards in hand, especially if this drive check nets him some triggers. That's gonna be kind of yikes. All right, here it comes. Stand two. There's a retire, but it misses timing, I think. Pretty sure that misses timing. All right, gonna be PG. And then let's see if he gives me the fourth damage. Pass? No, not passing. Okay, cool. That's fine. Then that's good. I can actually break ride. Heal whiffs, but that's fine. That's A OK. A OK. Alright, so now we can do the Legion and just basically finish things in style. Alright. Alright, bump the volume. Phantom Brasta Abyss. But of course, that the, the right chant for that card is actually just the... Um, it's the whatchamacallit. Oh, we can actually use the skill here too. Because we have another BDR to counter charge with. But yeah, the, the right chant there is actually the one for... What's it called again? Um, I forget its name. Looks like we can overcall this, so we can retire just the back row. Alright, well, the right chant is the one for PBD, actually. Interestingly enough. Alright, we just put four triggers back, I think. Don't need to think too much. Put four triggers back, and then we just bash face three times. Four times, actually. And... He's close to deck out. We know the bottom two cards. We just need to know the top. And then we can guess the rest of the list, more or less. Alright, so we swing. Of course, the restand is only one counter blast as well, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Oh, no PGs after all that drawing, really? Alright, this might be a heal. I don't know. Nope, it's not. Alright, well, didn't even get to show off RPBA's effect. But, yeah, that was pretty interesting game. Our opponent... Play something. It feel, felt like a Legion deck from the starter, but maybe just played it for the resist. I don't really know, but I mean, that's the first dub picked up uh, and I guess showed off the early game and everything else about the deck, but didn't really quite show off. I mean, RPBA is literally just a restander, so it's not really like super fancy, but it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. All right. Speaking of which, we got the sleeves for it, too. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Let's give it a spin for another game <clears throat> as usual. Oh, this is the one card. This is the one card that is in the tournament PR store and not in actually, not actually in the in the packs or anything, which is, which is pretty nice. Which is pretty nice. All right, my friend is spamming me with images of a, of a restaurant's menu. 
that I already looked at <laughs> as we speak. Anyway, let's get into this game and see. Hopefully use RPBA, show off some more of the cards. All right, Hibit. Let's have a good one, Hibito. Hibito going second, which is pretty okay for this deck. Like, it's, it's a slower deck in that sense where we don't, like, burst out. You know, we don't run through the gates, you know, just slamming left and right. Um, so it's a bit of a different story in that sense. I think here we're going to ride the Macart. Macart ride is actually not too bad. I feel like I should be mulliganing away BDR more often. I don't know, because I like having BDR as well for like potential like pesky retires. Azel, wow. That's interesting. Right, we don't need the Mordred search anymore, because we have Mordred already, so we can ride this quite freely. That's generally what we want to do. We have a PG in hand as well, which is a nice start. And otherwise, we're going to just... Oh, well, speaking of PGs, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, speaking of PGs. All right. So we can go into Macart next turn. Ooh, lop your shooter. We're running into some damn the morning the morning time slot definitely has some interesting decks. Cause like now it's like like 5 p.m., 6 p.m. in Japan as I'm recording this. So it's like people are getting off work, you know, it's like the commute home. Maybe there's more people playing. So we're getting more variety in our opponents. Rushing me down as well. Quite peculiar. I guess I could go for a Doran. I could kind of push here already. You know what? Let's go for it. Why not? Why not? We could kill the starter too, but I'm quite okay with that starter being there. It's not... I don't find that starter that great. So we can just push this out and just kind of like also aggress him right back and maybe check a trigger. Nope, that's fine. Of course, depends if he checks the defense. If he doesn't, he checks a PG. <clears throat> Man, when I see two PGs go down... Oh, never mind. He heals. Is this a Pelinor Azel deck or something? We're running into some pretty interesting things today. Definitely not a accurate representation of what I normally play against. This is very much like just Azel. Azel hasn't had any kind of support recently, so... I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. This might work for the Azels too. Might just be a favorite pocket pick deck. Alright, self-damager. Here comes another one. Yup. Here comes Azel's turbo skill. Oh, calling down first and then using the starter and only then gonna use Azel? Interesting. Alright, finds the Platina. He has all the rank rewards, too. Alright, I mean, work hard for those. Work hard for those. <clears throat> Let's see what he finds. Mm, Dindrain or a blaster? Dindrain it is, okay. That's fine. So he has to swing. Swing here, like swing with this into the blaster dark. Swing with the lion into face and then push me to four. Quite early, quite early that I'm getting pushed to four here. Not that I really mind, to be honest. I can sit on the Mordred, I think, for a turn without feeling too bad about it. Because I think the Break Ride still adds so much tempo to your um, to your turn. And just a tutoring for the for the Grade 2 is really nice. Yeah, I think doing the restand here just doesn't really net me too much advantage. And instead, we can just kind of, like, play a bit more calm. Search out, din like, search out the Swordbreakers, almost a Dindrain there. I think that's better here. Yeah, and we can pop the grade one in the back with this. Kind of like, you know, get through his field a little bit. There's a BDR skill. Then we just call the heal down. Also, my drop zone isn't good enough for Legion yet, so that's another problem that we're running into here. But it's fine. We'll fill it up with Dindrain. You know, Dindrain. Not Dindrain. God damn it. Swordbreaker. I play against one Azel and I start saying Dindrain. <laughs> the curse of playing against golds. The heal here is pretty big too, actually. Alright, he also gets a second heal. All these Pelinors, quite interesting. Alright, we use Judge about to get double Swordbreaker. You know, just to... You sometimes go Swordbreaker Dorant if you don't have one already, but I already have one, so I'm pretty, pretty much fine in that front. Pretty much chilling, vibing. So yeah, let's fill up the drop zone, fill up the hands. You know, it's a two-for-one meal deal at McDonald's. Quite nice. Another PG picked up, that's good. I mean, that's why we run all these draw effect cards, is like to draw into PGs. Not draw into heals, though. That's definitely not what I'm looking for here. Alright, so he's a 3. Let's see if he has another self-damager to back up all his plays. Generally, I feel like they do. Or not. That's going to be just a few great 3s, and he's going to bash face, push me to 5. We're going to go into... We're going to go into RPBA here. Do I want to go into RPBA? PBA? I could actually go into Cormac. Ooh, crit already. I guess he is running quite a few of them, so it does make sense that he sees them eventually. This is very much just an Azel deck. I think... We draw into Mordred. I theoretically could go... Um, 
I theoretically could go into RPBA because we have enough power for it. Because I swing 11, go to 4, go to 5, and then 6, 6, 2 cards in hand. We actually theoretically can go into RPBA and this might clean up the game. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. I think this could work. I think this could work. Alright. Very nice. So Mordu, we're going to search out the Cormac here. I don't think we need anything else. And then we, when we Legion, we're going to search out a Grade 1. We can actually search out the Trumpeter here as well to like fill up our board very nicely. Very nicely. Uh, I think I'm just going to overcall this to put the heal back. Although I'm going to attack before heal turn. Oh, maybe that wasn't worth it. It's fine. Alright, so here we're going to Legion. So put back one, two, three, four. I kind of want to put PGs back instead. Let's do it like this. We have one BDR still in deck, so I think it's fine. Let's do this. Alright, so now the Cormac will search out the... can search out a Trumpeter, which will search out a... Like, you know, which will make us a uh, grade one, uh, grade 0 Revenger. So search out the Trumpeter, and we have an, exactly enough CB for everything, too. So that's cool. So they're both in rest state, which is fine. Alright, we call this here. And now we have exactly one CB for the plays you want to make, so... Very nice, very nice. And we can just get into it. Alright, so that's one damage. Boop. Nothing. Second damage. Nothing. Third damage. Show me them PGs, baby. So that's a strong thing here. We can add this power to Vanguard to get over defensives and stuff, which is great. Alright, PG checked. Very nice. And then retire three. Can actually show you the skill now for Kalmos 1. Kalmos 1 is insane. The fact that they buffed that to Kalmos 1 is just wild to me. It's still wild to me. Alright, then we swing with, what, 37? Cormac. Alright, and... Alright, that hits. Does he have a heal for me? We've seen two, I think, so far, so there could still be a heal that comes through here. It is not. Of course, he had two PGs in the uh, in the damage, so I didn't really expect to see too many there. So yeah, two clean games against decks that I wouldn't really consider Tier 1, so I guess it wasn't really a good showing of how strong this deck is compared to the meta, but you can't choose your opponents. You gotta play against what you get. So, yeah, I think that did show off, though. You know, the general ways that this deck is played, it's very straightforward. You just basically play good old Revengers with a better re-standard than Raging Form, and that's what it comes down to. That's quite literally what it comes down to. Uh, so, yeah, not Bluish Flames. already showed you that. We don't have that many decks left for this set. I still need to do the Nirvana one at some point, too, so I'll find a time for that. i probably do, like, Nirvana Kagero or something. But, yeah, so this was Avengers. Definitely one of the top meta decks right now as well. Just really, really strong overall. Just got even more tools than it had already. An even better restander than it had already. And other than that, it's just good old Revengers doing good old Revengers stuff. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.